Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and we're going to start our Lord of the Rings playthrough. Let's go hunt some orcs. The Lord of the Rings turn sequence is seven phases long. The first phase is called the resource phase. In this phase, each player will add one resource in to each of their hero's resource pools and then draw one card. So we have our three heroes here. We'll place a resource token underneath each one. Now, what you need to know about these resources are they are the type of resource that's equal to whatever their hero type is. So we have lore here for Biffer. So this is a lore resource, and we can use that resource to play any lore cards. But Quickbeam here is a tactics hero, and so his resource can only be used to play tactic cards. So if you play with a deck that only has one type of sphere, so let's say all three were lore, it'd be really easy because all the cards that you have in your deck were lore cards, and so you could use any of these resources to pay for any of your cards. But for us, we are not going to be able to use Quick Beam's resources for lore cards, and we're not going to be able to use Biffer's or Barivor's resources for tactics cards. Now let's go ahead and draw a card. Our seventh card in hand will be Entmoot. Oh yes, this is a great card, and it's a zero cost. I love it. We'll now do the same thing for Steve's deck. So we'll have two spirit resources with Eowyn and Baragond, and then one tactics resource from Legolas. We also will draw another card, and we have the Gondorian Discipline. Ooh, that's a nice one as well. Before moving to phase two, we do have an option to play or do any actions at this point before moving to phase two, and I think we're going to. We're going to activate Biffer's ability. Pay one resource from a hero's resource pool to add one resource to Biffer's resource pool. Any player may trigger this ability. So we're going to do that, and we're going to give up Legolas's uh, resource over on Steve's deck so we can place another resource over here for Biffer. That means now my Ent deck has a total of four resources, and so we can pull out our Treebeard first round. Now we're going to move to the planning phase. During the planning phase, starting with the first player, we can add allies and attachment cards. And then we're going to move to the next player and do the same thing. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to play Entmoot. Play only if you control at least one Ent character. Well, we do have Quick Beam, so we can do that. Search the top five cards of your deck for any number of Ent cards and add them to your hand. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck. So we're going to place this in our discard pile and draw five cards. We have our Forest Snare. We can't keep that one. It's not an end card. Ah, oh, the Warden of Healing. Can't put that in. Ooh, we can put the Welling Hall Preserver. And so that's three, four, another Welling Hall Preserver. And one more. We have, oh, this, Boomed and Trumpeted. What's awesome about this is even though it's an event card, it's an Ent event card. And we can place any of Ent cards into our hand. So this will go into our hand. Now we'll take these two and shuffle them back into our deck. Next, we're going to play Treebeard. Now, to play Treebeard, we have to pay four resources to do this. Normally, let's say we were playing this card, we would have to pay all of it from whatever sphere we see on the card here. But you can see Treebeard has no sphere. So that means we can pay for him from any sphere. So we can pay the two from Biffer, one from Quickbeam, and one from Barivor, and we get to bring a Treebeard out. Yes! We'll place him right here next to Biffer. Here's the thing, though. He comes in, cannot have restricted attachments, and Treebeard uh, enters play exhausted. So what I do, because it's hard to get everything on camera, I'm going to use these tokens just to show when I exhaust a character. So normally what you would do is you would tap it sideways, but you can see that's going to take up a lot more space, and I'm worried about running out of space for camera uh, purposes. So I'm just going to place these tokens on the heroes or characters when they exhaust, and that will just denote he's been exhausted. So we're not going to be able to use anything of his willpower, attack, or defense this round, but next round we can. And next round, he'll generate one resource, which is great. It's like having another hero. Now we're going to move over to Steve's turn, and Steve is going to use both of his spirit resources to place out the unexpected courage. And we're going to place this on Baragond. 
we have to attach it to a hero. So it cannot be attached to a character. But once it's attached to a hero, we can exhaust Unexpected Courage to ready the attached hero. So this is going to allow Baragon to defend and attack. Or maybe he could defend twice because he's Sentinel. Awesome. We'll simply slide that underneath Baragond like so. Now it's time to move to phase three, and that is the quest phase. So remember, our goal of the game is we have to gain 30 progress on this specific quest card. And we have to make sure we defeat the Orc War Party, and Ierion cannot be killed or captured. It has to be with the first player. So those are our objectives. How we place progress on this objective card is by questing. So the more we quest, the more likely we are to be able to place progress on this quest card. The problem is everything in the staging area is adding threat. And what happens is we're going to compare our quest points to the threat in the staging area. And if we have more quest points than what's in the staging area, we'll gain progress for the difference. But if there's more threat in the staging area than what we quested for, we gain the difference in threat. And our threat meters go up. And if we ever get up to that 50, we're eliminated from the game. So right now, our total threat is 3, plus 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. So right now, if we quested for 6, we would not be gaining any progress on the quest, but we'd also not be gaining any threat. But here's the kicker. When we move to the next phase, we're going to draw cards from the encounter deck equal to the amount of players. And we don't know what those are going to be. So we're going to draw two more cards, and those cards are going to go into the staging area, potentially, depending on what they are. And they could increase the threat out in the staging area. So we have to decide, well, we don't want to just do six. If we want to place progress on our actual quest, we'll probably want to want to go and quest with more heroes. The thing is, if we quest with more heroes, they're exhausted and we can't use them to attack or defend. So that's the fun part about the game. How many of your allies do you want to quest with? How many do you want to defend with? And how many do you want to attack with? Because each different one costs those, uh, those allies or those characters are then exhausted and you can't use them for anything else. So I think it's a bit of a no-brainer that we're going to have Aon over here quest. And how we know how much we quest for is we look at what their willpower is. So Eowyn's willpower is four. So that's four already that we have with just one character. That's why she's awesome. And don't forget her ability. We can, as an action, discard a card from our hand to give us plus one willpower. And we can have each of our players do that. So we could potentially add two more willpower for her. So she could do six willpower just herself. Yeah, she's awesome. We're definitely going to want more than just her four to six. So we're also going to send Biffer, which will add two more. So that's going to be a total of six right now. And Barivor, that's going to add another two. So that's a total of eight. And lastly, we have Ierion here. And remember, he's an XXX. So his willpower is equal to the amount of quest cards in play. We only have one quest card. So his willpower is one. So we'll send his two. So that makes a total of nine questing points. Now, something that I do that you definitely don't have to do, but it really helps me just because of sometimes you're going to have lots of allies and lots of things affecting your willpower. I like to go ahead and place out on a die to say, okay, this is the amount we're questing, and then place out on another die the amount of threat already out in the pool. So we already have six threat out in the pool. We're questing for nine. Let's now draw our two encounter cards. Our first encounter card is the Borders of Breland. While Borders of Breland is in the staging area, which is where it's going to go, it gains forced. At the beginning of the quest phase, return one enemy engaged with a player to the staging area. Ah, that's not the end of the world. But that is going to add two threat. So that's going to put the total staging area threat to eight compared to our nine. Our next card will be, oh no, I don't like these. Weight of Responsibility. When revealed, reveal one encounter card for each quest card in play. Oh, we only have one quest card. That could get bad later. So we'll reveal one more card. And this treachery card will just simply go to the discard pile. Okay, let's see. What's the last one? Oh my gosh, that was great timing because here is a quest card. Rescue Arion. While scouting ahead, Aerion is ambushed by several orcs. The ranger is knocked unconscious and dragged away by the orcs. You must rescue him! This has an effect. Time 4. 
When revealed, the first player loses control of Aerion and places him face down underneath this stage. When this stage is defeated, the first player takes control of Aerion and exhausts him. Forced, after the last time counter is removed from the stage, discard Aerion. So the first thing that happens is we lose Aerion, and that means we also lose his willpower. So our total questing goes from 9 down to 8. Bummer. Then we're going to place four time tokens on here. At the end of each round, we're, go we're going to remove one of those time tokens. If there's no time tokens left, Aerion is taken away, gone forever, and we lose this quest. Now what we need to do is add up the threat of all the cards in the staging area. So we have two for the Border Breelands, three for the Orc Warrior Party, that's five. This now is two for the X because X is the number of quest cards in play. There's the main quest and the side quest. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's nine total to R8 since we lost Eerion. But we do still have Eowyn's ability. We can now use Eowyn's ability here. Discard one card from your hand to give Eowyn plus one willpower until the end of the phase. We're still within that quest phase, so we can do this. This effect may be triggered by each player once each round. So we're each going to discard. We're going to have the Ent deck discard one of the Wellington Preservers, because we have three of them. And we're going to have Steve's deck discard the Elven Light. Which, remember, we can later take an action and put that back into our hand and draw a card. Awesome! Now, since we had a total of 10 willpower for questing compared to the 9 threat in the staging area, we place 1. Yeah, that's right. 1 progress <laughs> on this quest. Only 29 to go. We now can move to the travel phase. Now, during the travel phase, we can choose one of the locations that's out in the staging area and travel to it. Think of it like this. These locations are out there and they're adding threat because we could have issues in the border of Breeland or the rugged country, but we may not be in those locations taking care of it at that point. And so that just adds to our overall threat of our quest. But if we decide to go to one of those places and take that threat on head on, we actually can remove it from the staging area and essentially reduce the amount of threat in the staging area by the amount that's listed up here, which is really nice. The disadvantage is whenever we place progress on the current quest that we're on, instead we have to place the progress on the location and we need to have the amount that's listed here of progress before we can complete that location and then go and put progress on the quest. So it's kind of a trade-off. So based on what I'm seeing here, I think we are going to travel. We don't have to travel, but I think we're going to travel to the rugged country. By doing this, we get that two threat out of the staging area. And if next round, when we decide to, to maybe change the quest that we're going to be trying to complete to a side quest, you know, trying to take care of Eerion, this doesn't get plus two threat because this would be a four threat card if it was sitting out in the staging area. So yeah, let's grab this. We'll place the rugged country as our active location. Perfect. Our next phase is the engagement phase. Now this is going to be a little bit different for this quest. Normally, you first start out with optional engagements where you can engage one enemy and you can engage them no matter what their threat is or their engagement cost, I should say, is you can engage them. And the advantage of engaging them is, first of all, you can attack them and defeat them. But second of all, you're pulling that threat out of the staging area. We've got three threats sitting in the staging area and we have to quest over that to be able to get through the location and the quest cards, right? So pulling them out of the staging area is a good thing. The bad thing is then they can attack us. <laughs> so you got to watch out and decide, well, do, is it worth engaging them or not? So yeah, we, we have that optional engagement phase, or I should say portion of the phase. And then normally you would do an engagement check, which is where you'd simply look, okay, what is their threat number or their engagement number? And then compare it to your threat. If our threat was 41, this guy normally would come and engage us. But here's the thing. Because of this quest, there are no engagement checks. So the enemies will always stay out in the staging area because they're trying to run away from us. So that's great and all that they won't attack us. But don't forget, at the end of the round, we have to increase our threat for every enemy in the staging area. So there's another reason why we might want to engage the Orc War Party. 
So what I think I'm going to do is I am going to engage this orc war party, and I'm going to do that as the Ent character. This means we'll move that orc war party out of the staging area and it will engage us. That will complete the encounter phase. Now we move to the combat phase. And the first thing that happens is we draw a shadow card, which is simply just the top card of the encounter deck. I love this mechanic. On some of the cards on the bottom, there are shadow effects. And if we happen to draw a type of that type of card and flip it over, it'll have a shadow effect that may increase this guy's attack. It may do something where we have to discard attachments. Who knows? Anyways, it's really cool how this works and you never know exactly what they're going to do. So now what we're going to do is have this orc war party attack, but we get to declare a defender if we want. We also can decide to go undefended. If we go undefended, we don't have to exhaust any of our characters, but all the damage that we take has to be placed on one of our heroes, not any ally or other character. It's one of our heroes. And the thing is, if you look at our hero's health, all of them are less than six. <laughs> And this guy attacks for six. And whenever you go undefended, you ignore your armor. So we definitely want to defend this attack. Instead of us using one of our Ents to defend, we can use Baragond here because he has the keyword Sentinel. Anytime you see that keyword Sentinel, that means that you can defend for another player. So we're going to have Baragond defend. That means we have his four armor and four health if he somehow takes eight points of damage, he would be killed instead of any of the Ents characters or allies. We have now declared our defender, so now what we're going to do is reveal our shadow card. And there is nothing here that shows that there's a shadow effect. For an example, this card that's out in the staging area right now, do you see how it says shadow down here below this line? If we had drawn this card, the defending character gets minus one armor for uh, each quest stage in play. <laughs> so that would have been, uh, negated Baragon's armor by two, which would have probably meant that he would have died. <laughs> wow. So, so for us, it was just this outline homestead. We can simply discard this card and we do six points of damage to Baragon. Baragon has a total of four armor, so that means two points of damage should be done to him. However, we have this response card, Gondorian Discipline, and it says response. Cancel up to two points of damage just dealt to a Gondor character. He is our Gondor character. We just negated any damage done to Baragond. That means we also get to use his effect. After Baragond defends an attack and takes no damage, reduce the defending player's threat by one. Even though Baragond is defending, he's defending for the Ent deck. So the Ent deck actually gets the benefit and reduces their threat by 1 to 28. Now I don't think I mentioned this, but you see I had to exhaust Baragond to defend. But now what I could do if I wanted, we could exhaust our unexpected courage card to ready Baragond. So you see, he could then defend a second time. That's why this is such a great combo. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> But for this round, I don't need to do that because there's no one else we need to defend against. Now that we have defended against that orc war party, we can attack. And you better believe we're going to. We're going to use quick beam and attack for four points of damage. Steve is going to add Legolas to this attack. And he can do that because Legolas is ranged. So whenever one of your characters has the ranged ability, you can attack other enemies that are engaged with other players. We can't use Baragond or um, Eowyn because they do not have the ranged ability. But so that means we're doing a total of seven points of damage to that orc war party. Seven minus three, because they do have three armor, is four points of damage. So we didn't kill the orc war party, but we sure as heck got close. Four out of the six. We're almost done with our first round, but we are going to do our Elven Light action. Return Elven Light action to your hand from your discard pile, then draw one card. Um, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> so we're going to get the Rider of Rohan. While a side quest is in the victory display, Rider of Rohan does not exhaust a quest. Sweet! Our final phase for the first turn is the Refresh phase. Because of this quest, every refresh phase we lose one time. So that means Erion only has three more rounds left before he's killed. 
We also will refresh all of our characters and we'll do the same thing with our end deck. We'll also each increase our threat by one. So we're both going to be at 29. And then the first player token will go over to Steve. Steve will now be our first player for turn two. Whew, that makes for a long first round. <laughs> don't worry, they're going to go much quicker now, now that I don't have to explain everything. So first thing that's going to happen is we gain one resource, and then we draw one card for both players. And what's nice for our end deck is we get to gain four resources. But one of those we can only use for end cards, which is totally okay by me. Now let's play and pay for some of our cards. Steve is first player, so the first thing he's going to do is play the ally Envoy of Pelagrir. This is going to cost two resources, and you can see this is a neutral uh, ally, so it can be paid from any of the resource pools. So we're going to grab one from Eowyn and one from Baragon. Now, her ability is, after Envoy of Pelagrir enters play, add one resource to a Gondor or Noble hero's resource pool. Well, Legolas is a noble so that means we can place another one here in the tactics area and why i want to do that is because now i want to play raiment of war yeah we're gonna put that on baragon attach to a warrior character raiment of war counts as two restricted attachments what that means is now going forward baragon can't have any restricted attachments on him because the most you can ever have is two he can still have other attachments, but they just can't be restricted attachments. He's going to get plus one attack, plus one def uh, armor, and plus two hit points. <laughs> and we'll have to use both of these resources to, to play that card. For our end deck, I think we're going to play the Warden of Healing first. And we're going to use Biffers and Barivor's resource to do that. It says here... Exhaust Warden of Healing to heal one damage on up to two different characters. Then you can pay two lower resources to ready the Warden of Healing. So we can do that a couple of times if we had some resources. Not bad. Then what we're going to do is play this Ent Draft. By the way, I've been saying that wrong. It's not Drought or Draught. It's Draft. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, for telling me that. Uh, what this does is play only if you control at least one Ent character. Heck yeah, we control two. Attached to a character, limited one per character, and that character gains plus two hit points. And we're going to use the resource on Treebeard since this is an Ent card. We can do that. And we're going to place this on Quick Beam. Now that we've finished both the resource phase and the planning phase, we move to the quest phase. And it says here, at the beginning of the quest phase, return one enemy engaged with a player to the staging area. Bummer! So that orc war party is going to break away from our Ent deck and get back into the staging area and add three threat, which is going to make it even harder for us to quest this round. We also have to decide at this point which quest we're going to try and add progress to. And we're going to try and rescue Eerion. But we still can't place any progress on here until we get through our current location, which is that rugged country card. So now we just need to decide who we want to send questing. Well, definitely Eowyn and definitely the Envoy for Steve. So that's a total of five willpower so far. We're also going to quest with Treebeard, Biffer, Quick Beam and Barivor. Two, four, six, eight. Eight plus five is a total of 13 quests. So I'll place that on these dice so we don't forget. So it's 13, and the threat that's in the staging area is only totaling up to seven. So I like that. Let's now draw our two encounter cards. Our first one is Outline Homestead, Doomed 1. Okay, what that means is we both have to increase our threat by 1. So we'll both be at 30. It also says while Outline Homestead is in the staging area, players cannot reduce their threat. When you travel here, you have to reveal a card from the encounter deck. Oh, that's terrible! <laughs> and it adds 2 threat to the staging area. That puts them up to 9. So we'll grab this, put it in the staging area, and our second card... We have When Revealed. It's a treachery card. Each player returns one enemy engaged with him to the staging area. If no enemy was returned to the staging area this way, surprising speed gains surged and doomed one. <laughs> okay, doomed one, we know. We're both going to go up to 31 threat. I'm only showing you one of these just because they're both the same. If we were at different threats, we'd just be increasing it by one, and it would be different for each deck. It just happens to be right now we're both at the same amount. So we're both at 31. And what Surge means, 
since we didn't move any enemies that were engaged to us back to the staging area, we have to draw another encounter card. And we have the Angmar Orc. When revealed, either discard one ally from play or reveal an additional encounter card. Pfft, we're not <laughs> having an additional encounter card. So basically, this kills off one of our allies. And I think the best ally to do that to is this Envoy. It's only worth one willpower and one attack. Ugh. There's better ones out there, like the Warden of Healing being able to heal. So we'll discard this. So looking here, the total amount of threat that we have in the staging area is 3 plus 2 for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And we had a total of 13 willpower. So we're definitely going to use Awen's action again, and we're each going to discard a card to add up our willpower by two. Oh, but we lost our Envoy. So that means we have to reduce the amount of willpower by one. So our willpower right now is only 12. That's a bummer. But we can still add two by each of us discarding one card. So we're going to discard these two cards. They might look familiar. <laughs> we discard the Elven Light last time, and that's going to be a nice combo for a while. And we're going to discard our second Welling Hall Preserver. I'm hoping our Entech doesn't have to keep discarding because he's going to start losing cards in his hand too much. But we really need to get that progress. The one good thing is we did have three more willpower than the total threat once we discarded those two cards and that means we can complete or we have moved through this location of the rugged country and we can discard this but we didn't add any more progress to that side quest which is a bummer now we've completed the quest phase looking at the travel phase i think we're going to travel to the Bree lands i know it costs four but now we don't have to push enemies that we don't immediately defeat back into the staging area and increase the threat. Hopefully, this will help us keep the threat low in our staging area so we can quest for tons of quest points. Moving to the encounter phase, we can each optionally engage one enemy. So we're going to have Steve engage the Angamar Orc, and we're going to engage that Orc War Party again. Pulling them back, we're convincing them to slow down because they've got to deal with us. Now we're going to move to the combat phase, and we place one shadow card on each enemy we got lucky last time i'm not going to count on it this time now since there are two enemies out what we need to do is have each enemy attack first then we'll attack each enemy one at a time so we'll first start with the first player which is steve this orc is going to attack and we're going to defend with Baragon. But don't forget, Baragon has plus one to his armor and plus two hit points. So he's a five and he has six health. So that's really nice. But we'll reveal the shadow card and it says, Defending player either exhausts a hero he controls or returns the attacking enemy to the staging area after this attack. Ugh. I think we're definitely going to exhaust Legolas. We do not want to put this guy back in the staging area. So I'll exhaust Legolas, but that means this Agmar Orc only hits for two points of damage, doesn't even touch Baragond. Normally, because of Baragond's effect, we would be able to reduce our threat by one, but because that blasted homestead is out in the staging area, we can't decrease our threat. So no effect there. We are, though, so technically Baragon's exhausted. But what we're going to do is now exhaust our unexpected courage so that we can ready Baragon again, because now we can have Baragon defend against the other attack that's coming. And that's going to be our Orc War Party over here. They're attacking for six points of damage. We're going to add... Oh, yes, it's a side quest. Eh, just gets discarded. We don't have to worry about that side quest till we shuffle the encounter deck. And that's doing six points of damage to Baragon. Six points minus five for the armor. That places only one point of damage on Baragon. Not bad. Now that we've defended, let's go and attack. Here's the thing, though. I forgot to place this here to say we've exhausted and used Baragon for that second defense. So we have nobody left to attack. And our end deck doesn't have any ranged heroes or any ranged characters. So we're not going to attack. We're just going to keep that orc engaged with us. We are, over here on the end side, going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to use Quick Beam's effect. Deal two points of damage to ready Quick Beam. So Quick Beam is ready to rock. Now he just took two points of damage. So we're going to pay the one resource he has, and we're going to play Boomed and Trumpeted. After an end character takes an amount of damage, ready it. 
that character gets plus three attack until the end of the phase. So now he is a seven attack, and he's going to attack that orc war party. Seven minus the three armor is four points of damage, and he only had two health left, so we can say see it to the orc war party. Before we complete the combat phase, we are going to do an action with our Warden of Healing. We're going to exhaust him and heal one point of damage for two different characters. So Baragond is going to heal, and Quickbeam is also going to heal by one, so he only has one point of damage. Now, let's move to the refresh phase. The first thing we have to do for refresh is lose another time. Man, we gotta get through this side quest. Then, all of our characters will refresh. And last but not least, both of our threats are going to increase to 32. I hope you guys are okay with it. I'm going to go for at least two more rounds. It's going to make for a long video, but with, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, but I am selling and trying to buy slash build a house right now. So I'm really busy <laughs> in personal life right now. And so when I have some time to record, I'm just going to record a longer playthrough. Hope that's okay. <laughs> so we'll start the next round. I did forget to move the first player token. Sorry about that. We're going to move it over to our Ent deck. We'll generate our resources and draw Gandalf. Yes. We'll gain one resource each. We'll draw one card. Yes. We need this, the West Road Traveler, getting some more willpower. We're also going to take the action here on the Elven Light so we can draw another card and we have the Rivendell blade that will be perfect on Legolas now moving to the planning phase the first thing we're going to do is activate Biffer's ability we're going to pay a resource from quick beam here to essentially create another lore resource because I want to play this Wellington preserver but I don't want to use tree beards uh uh, a resource here because next round when he has two here he can use two resources to ready any end character what a sweet action so we can have somebody quest and attack or defend and attack so i'm going to use these three resources to bring out the wellington preserver but don't forget ends are slow so he's going to come out exhausted so we're not going to be able to use his awesome three um, willpower until next round. Over here on Steve's deck, it's kind of a no-brainer. We're going to spend two of our resources to bring out our West Road Traveler. It had to be two from our Spirit. And then one for our Rivendell Blade that can only go on Legolas. But now when Legolas attacks, minus two armor. Yeah! Now you may have noticed that we did have a response effect here that we could have used for our West Road Traveler, but it is optional. We don't have to do it, and it had to do with swapping out the location card with another one. I don't want to do that because the one that we have currently as our active location has the least amount of progress, progress that we need to complete it. That's definitely what I want because I need to save Yerion. For this questing phase, we really need to do a push here, so I'm going to send everybody except for our welling hall uh, preservers because they're exhausted but we're going to add two four six seven eight nine total willpower we're going to add six to that so we have a total of 15 willpower and yeah i should have said but we're definitely going for that side quest we have a total of 15 they only have four <laughs> there is a chance here so now we're going to move and draw two cards i'm nervous we have the Chetwood Forest. Okay, that has a travel effect. We're not traveling there, but that adds three. So they're going to go to seven threat. Okay, and then we have the Outline Homestead. We know what that is. Doomed one. So that means that we're both going to go up to 33 threat. Yeah, they're going to kill us with these doomed ones. And while this is in the staging area, we're not going to be able to reduce our threat. And that's going to put them up to nine. So right now we have a total of six total um, questing or willpower above their threat. Having six progress would allow us to complete the Breelands for four and place two on the Rescue Arion. I don't think that's enough. I'm going to use Eowyn's ability and discard these two. I'm killing the Ent's deck hands, uh, the Ent deck's hand. But hopefully I'm going to be able to play a card here that's going to help us next round to get some more cards. But this is going to allow us to complete 
this, we've added two more total willpower, so we add four progress to rescuing Erion. That means that we need, need, need to next round get two more progress here. Now in the travel phase, we're definitely going to go to the Chetwood Forest because this travel effect, there are no enemies in the staging area. <laughs> we just haven't been drawing them, which is wonderful. So we don't have to worry about its effect. And then that means we need a total of only five progress at the end of the next round to be able to complete that side quest. Oh, I think I can do that. Moving to the encounter phase, we don't have to worry about optionally engaging any enemies. There's none out there. We're taking care of that here with this orc. So moving straight to the combat phase, we'll drop this uh, card here for our shadow card. And now we can choose one of our characters to defend. Or hey, take it undefended, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use Baragon. Now something I haven't talked about yet. You know how I have been defending always with only one character? That's required. I cannot, unless I have a card, defend with more than one character. But when you attack, you can attack with multiple characters. You've seen me do that when Legolas attacked with Quick Beam. But yeah, you cannot defend with more than one character. So Baragon is going to defend. We've got a two attack coming at him. And we have, sweet, no shadow effect. Now, this is a little bit confusing. You see how it says when revealed here? You might think, oh, well, that effect has to take place. Nope. The only thing that, uh, that uh, takes place is a shadow effect, which you can see like this card has. It would be underneath this line. So the when revealed only happens if you draw that during the quest phase. Otherwise, this card is blank for shadow purposes, so we just discard it. And two points of damage doesn't hit Baragon. I could reduce my threat if we didn't have those blasted cards in the staging area that prevent us from lowering our threat. So we've done our attack. We're now going to exhaust our unexpected courage. So we have Baragon back again, who has a total of two attack, plus Legolas's three attack, and having our minus two to the armor, and we are going to attack. So that's three plus two is five attack. He only has one armor, three and one armor is four. We just took this orc out. But both of these have been exhausted. We've cleared out those enemies pretty quick, which I'm really happy about. What I'm not so happy about is how hard it's been to try and rescue Arion. They're sure making this hard. So during the refresh phase, we'll remove one time. We'll increase both of our threats to 34, which that's not bad. We're still doing okay there. I'm just really worried about completing this for the next round. And then all of our allies and heroes will refresh. And don't forget, Steve will now become first player. Okay, you guys, the time is at hand. We must save Arion here. We can see him. We're almost there. We just need two more progress. So gain our resources and draw our card. We'll do the same thing for our end deck. And now Treebeard has himself two uh, resources, which is awesome. And we'll draw this card. Nice. Something I forgot to do at the refresh phase is use our response here for Welling Hall Preserver. After Welling Hall Preserver readies, heal one damage from an end character. While Quick Beam still had one point of damage on him, not anymore. He's fully healed. Before we move to the planning phase, we are going to do our action of the Elven Light, so we can simply draw another card. <gasps> we have our Northern Tracker. This can really help us with those location cards, but he costs four uh, spirit, and we only have two spirit resources this round. Because of that, I think we're not going to play anything for Steve. What we are going to do is use Biffer's ability, though, and grab the resource from Legolas and place it here so we have another resource. The reason I'm doing that is because hopefully next round we can get Gandalf out and maybe help us with a ton of questing. This round, though, what I'm going to do is play these two cards. And we're going to pay for both of them, one from Berivor and one from Biffer. This end drought is pretty simple, and we're just going to place it on Treebeard, giving him plus two health. The long defeat, though, is pretty awesome. Attached to a quest card in play, limit one per quest. Response, after the attached quest is defeated, which it better be defeated or we're just going to lose the game, each player either draws two cards or heals up to five damage from among the characters he controls. So we're going to place this on the Rescue Ierion quest card. If we do complete this, being able to draw two cards each would be really nice. 
we have a total of six threat in the staging area. So we'll be able to take care of that just with Eowyn and the West Ride Road Traveler. The end deck is going to send everybody. <laughs> Welling Hall Preserver, Warden of Healing, Treebeard, Biffer, Quick Beam, and Barivor. So that's a total of 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 plus 6 is 18. We better be able to do this. 18 to 6. That's got to be good enough, right? Oh, we have the Angmar Captain. Forced. After Angmar Captain attacks and destroys an ally, discard the top card of the defending player's deck. If the discarded card is an ally, he makes an additional attack. Ugh! And he adds 3 threat. So they're now at 9. Gross. Okay. Oh, another one. Another orc. The Angmar um, Raiders. Uh, forced. After Angmar Raider attacks and destroys an ally, return it to the staging area. And it's also 3 threat. So they're going to go to 12. Do we have enough? That's the question. 12 to 18. That's 6. That actually will be just enough. Actually, looking at this, we only needed 3 plus 2 is 5. We actually had willpower of 6, so we don't have to discard for Aon's ability. But I think I might still do that, at least with um, Steve's deck. We'll discard the Alvin Light, just so that we have that in our discard pile and we can draw more cards next time. But we have now completed this side quest. Finally, <laughs> just barely. Now you can see it has this victory icon right here. That means we put it in the victory pile. So when we reshuffle the encounter deck, we're not going to have that come up again. And at the end, we can score our points. So we can score our victory points, which is kind of cool. So I'll place that in the victory pile. We also get to take control of Iarion, and that would be Steve who gets to gain control of him. And we get to draw two cards because none of our uh, characters are damaged. So each hero or each player will draw two cards. And this uh, location is finished. Wow, that was a lot. Two cards for Steve. So Steve will grab, ooh, a side quest himself, the double back, which will be totally useless right now because that reduces threat and we can't do that anyways. And another Rivendell blade. <laughs> My end deck over here is in much need of some more cards. So we'll draw these two. Oh, nice. And we got Beach Bone. Now, you may have noticed we had one additional progress that we didn't place anywhere. And that's because when you complete a quest, any excess progress is wasted. So that one additional quest we can't, or one additional progress we couldn't put on the other quest card. Bummer. But that's okay. Now what we can do is we can travel to either of these locations. But here's the thing. This is adding two threat, or if we make this the active location, it'll have eight progress before we've, got, we've moved through it. I'm kind of thinking of leaving these, not doing anything here, and this Shrouded Hills, it costs five, and right now that X, because there's only one quest card, is one. So I don't think I'm going to go anywhere. Next round, I'm going to try and push really hard again on questing. Maybe bring out Gandalf and get an additional four questing and try and push through the main quest. Moving to the encounter phase, I'm going to have the Ent deck take the Captain, and I'm going to have Steve's deck take the Marauder. Now we'll place one Shadow card on both of these enemies. One over here on the Ent side and one over here on Steve's side. So we're going to have this Marauder attack. Obviously, we're going to exhaust Baragon. He's only doing three points of damage, and we have attacking him, and he gets plus one attack, so that's four. If this attack destroys an ally, return it to the staging area. Four attack, we have four shield, plus one is five shield, doesn't even hit Baragon. I love it. Thank you so much, Steve. Then what we'll do is we'll exhaust our unexpected courage so we can ready Baragon to defend again against the captain. The captain is doing five points of damage plus attacking enemy gets plus one for each quest card in play so we only have one quest card so that means he's a six attack unfortunately even with the four plus one of five armor baragon does get hit for one point of damage but hey one <laughs> not bad moving to the attack step we're not going to attack the marauder that's on steve instead steve is going to focus his attack on that captain He's going to use Legolas. Legolas attacks for three and subtracts two of the armor for that captain. 
but we do have to exhaust Legolas. We're also going to use Quick Beam's ability, damage him twice so we can ready him, and he can attack, so he'll add 4 attack plus the 3, that's a total of 7. 7 attack would simply take out the captain, but he also has minus 2 armor, yeah, he's toast. Now I may have forgotten the wonderful ability of Legolas before, but we're not going to forget this time. After Legolas participates in an attack that destroys an enemy, place two progress tokens on the current quest. Uh, yes please. Two more will move us up to having a total of three. Only 27 to go, you guys. <laughs> we'll end the round by moving ourselves up to 35 threat for both Steve and I. We also, thanks to the Welling Hall Preserver, get to heal one damage on Quick Beam. Sweet. Finally, we'll move the first player token over to the end deck, and now we also have Iarion back so he can help us with questing or attacking. Yeah, I'm feeling good. I think we're going to end the video here. I'll make sure to make notes of anything I missed because it is likely that I missed something. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'm having so much fun. I love this game. Hope you guys are too. I will see you at the next stop.